good morning everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. And today we're talking about depression and obesity. <clears throat> it's the second in our series on depression. Uh, through the years, I've done a lot of talks on depression relative to head injuries, but particularly also how stress can impact this condition. But I felt like a, an overview was good since it's been a while since I did that. So last week we talked about the microbiome and depression and how your gut bacteria can interplay with your thoughts, which seems like a very remote association. But the research is actually coming out that there is an association and taking probiotics can be marginally helpful. And today we're talking about obesity. Now, with obesity, there seems to be a not a bi-directional relationship, but an association between the two conditions. There are people with depression, and when we say depression, we're not just referring to someone who has, you know, a couple days of feeling sad. <clears throat> we're referring to clinical depression where someone is literally depressed for at least two weeks, oftentimes months on end. They have very poor energy. Their sleep habits are disturbed. They may be losing weight. They may be gaining weight. They may lack pleasure in doing anything. And that is clinical depression. That is what we're talking about. And researchers have seen this association with obesity. And basically, to summarize it, uh, what they found is that if someone is obese, and they're going into depression. Basically, the obesity can be a risk factor for greater depression. They've also shown that depression by itself can lead to somebody being obese um, because they may have a change in their dietary habits. But as I mentioned before, some people go through major depression, they lose a lot of weight. And so this does not apply to everyone. But what seems to be the overlapping factor is that when individuals have depression and or obesity, there's an increase in peripheral inflammation. So we can test inflammation in the body using different blood markers like interleukin-6 or C-reactive protein, homocysteine is another one. And in doing so, we can see, okay, what are these levels of these inflammatory mediators in depressed individuals, obese individuals, and is there an overlap? And the answer is yes. So it's, it's kind of interesting that depression is associated with higher levels of inflammation and it raises the question of chicken or the egg. I've seen some studies where they say that the, the depression by itself is spawning more inflammation. Some people are thinking that somehow it leads to release of inflammatory mediators out of peripheral nerves. I've seen other people say, no, it's because of high stress levels, high cortisol levels that I've talked about in other broadcasts and how those high stress levels may break down your gastrointestinal tract where most of your immune system is. It can also lead to imbalances in the immune system. So those might be the generators of inflammation for people who have depression. And individuals who have obesity, they also have sources of inflammation. Most obese individuals have something called metabolic syndrome where they're moving into prediabetes. Their blood is a little too viscous, a little too thick. They have high cholesterol, high triglycerides. And in doing so, or when that happens, there typically is derangement of the gastrointestinal bacteria. And the derangement of the gastrointestinal bacteria is associated with pieces of bacteria breaking off, going into the bloodstream, going to the liver, and that creates inflammation. That activates inflammatory responses called PAMP responses. So the two conditions seem to overlap in their causation of inflammation, and the inflammation feeds back to the brain, and inflammation in the brain is not a good thing. So that is how these two tie together. And let me see, and also let me escape here, if I can go to the Facebook Live. Uh, okay, and so we have some comments. We have comments, stress, yes, I totally agree, anxiety, good morning everybody who's Who's joining uh, oh my goodness and we have one individual talking about how their husband is going through depression since they had a health issue they being the patient or the individual commenting um, okay very interesting sleep being disturbed so yeah very 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 interesting uh-huh so so that is depression and obesity. Let's just run through the slides. Let me go present from beginning. Okay, so 
So this one is from 2015. I have some more up-to-date ones, but we weren't able to get them in here. Um, let's go to this one. So I like this figure because here you can see at the top it says persistent course. So these are individuals they looked at them over a two-year period and they said those who had a persistent course of inflammation basically had greater than four number of dysregulations for inflammation. So here's zero to three. These are individuals who have zero to three markers for inflammation. These are individuals that have four to eight. If somebody has four to eight markers of inflammation, 61.5% of that group had a persistent course of depression, whereas the zero to three markers of inflammation, 38.1% of those individuals had a persistent course of depression. So it's actually pretty interesting. Even when you look at the remission and reoccurrence, 11% versus 17%. <clears throat> so taking these two together, you can see when there is inflammation, in the body, we're much, much more likely to have a chronic course of depression. And another reason why we're doing this whole series is because of treatment-resistant depression. Treatment-resistant depression, I don't think is something that a lot of people realize, is an entity out there. Upwards of half of people taking antidepressants don't have a long-term positive outcome with taking several different antidepressants. Some people take antidepressants and they feel great. Many of you will know these people. They go on something like Paxil or Prozac and they feel really good and <clears throat> they come out of their depression and you know they're fine the rest of their lives. There are other people who cycle on and off different antidepressants, never seeming to find the right one, which has spawned this condition called treatment-resistant depression. And that is why psychi psychiatrists, psychologists are really looking into what are the underlying nuances of this condition? The gastrointestinal microbiome is a piece of it. Inflammation is a piece of it. Obesity can be a piece of it. And so all these factors tie in as to why somebody's not coming out of a major depressive episode. And I thought this one was interesting too. If you look at this graph, they're even seeing how certain antidepressants affect inflammation levels. So for example, here in women, women who are taking tricyclic antidepressants, they had a much higher level of CRP, as did men who are taking TCAs and SNRIs. So SNRIs are like your drugs like Cymbalta, whereas the drugs like Prozac were not associated with higher levels of inflammation. So this is another piece of information if you are suffering with depression to talk to your psychiatrist about this. And you know, foster this discussion even further. So again, hello to everyone who's joined and I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions on obesity and depression, let me know. But basically the summary is that both conditions are associated with inflammation. Inflammation is bad for the brain. Probably those who have depression first without obesity, they can develop obesity, a certain subset of them, because they tend to eat too many carbohydrates. It's called hyperphagia. And then when they're doing that, that can lead to excessive weight gain because of caloric consumption and high carbohydrate diets. But depression by itself can promote inflammation, probably from a cortisol perspective and breaking down the gut and affecting the microbiome and affecting these things called cytokines. We also know that obesity in general is associated with inflammation. And again, inflammation is bad for the brain. And one of our last questions, can birth control or progesterone only pills cause depression? I'm going to do a whole series on hormones and depression, so I'll go into that. I have seen that relationship. I've also seen when women take birth control or if they are in the postmenopausal phase taking estrogen, it actually, I've seen it help depression. There's literature on that too. So, but I will do a whole series or a whole talk on hormones and depression. Okay. So thank you all for joining. Have a great Wednesday, and I will see you soon.